our mission is empowerment through education. You know, our core is education, whether that be in live seminars or an online course. The online workouts that we provide are done, you know, through the, the current social climate that we're in with the world being shut down. They're done to support a lot of other nonprofits in groups like the VA specifically. So we started this course uh, all with live seminars. That's where we began training was all live seminars. Um, there's a lot of hands-on things and discussion we love to have in person. And I, I think, you know, it's, it's really tough to not get that. But with COVID-19 starting, um, you know, it forced us to create an online version. I believe the biggest barrier is what we call pun intended, coaching paralysis. So it's just the same barrier of physical coaching uh, of uh, a class with people with disabilities. It's the paralysis of, I don't know if I'm going to hurt them or not. I don't know if this is safe. The last thing I want to do is say, uh, I don't know how to work with someone like you. So then you feel uncomfortable. Generally speaking, it's just a lack of knowledge that makes them feel paralyzed as a trainer to work with someone because that person is different. People that are learning adaptive fitness, there's really no manual for it. Uh, every, every, every single athlete's different. So if you have two athletes who both have cerebral palsy or both diagnosed with cerebral palsy, they're going to be on totally different ability levels, totally different spectrums. Um, they don't move the same. So methods is hard. And we get this question a lot is like, you know, what, how do you like standardized tests or how do you program? Our plan A's always go out the window, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that's in person or virtual. You'll have a great plan, you'll have your program, and it looks great, and then you get to it, and you're like, Burp, "We're gonna just throw that one away, and we're just gonna try this." Or you can run, like, roll with it, right? Yeah. So, like, an athlete will be doing an exercise, and you're like, "Oh, actually, that's maybe it's more functional for them," or "Oh, I kind of like that better." So, scratch my idea. You know, our athletes know their bodies way better than we will ever understand, right? In the beginning when we were making a lot of adjustments to the class, there was a lot of feedback of, um, hey, these are my needs. How can this, the movement that we did today meet my needs? Or, um, hey, I'm blind and or visually impaired. Can you send me an audio version in the beginning that is just you talking? And is more explanatory of the exercise and breaking them down a bit more. Yeah. So um, it was just really interesting. It was a huge, huge learning curve in the beginning because yeah. never have I taught a virtual class to such a wide variety of abilities, including those who are blind and visually impaired. I mean, I was finding I'm, and even now, because I get um, a handful of folks, I have to change my cueing, my wording. Um, it's, to it's totally different. Jump in wherever you can and, and do whatever you can. Cause one thing that I've found too, is that a lot of, a lot of these, um, gyms or where these adaptive, uh, activities are going on, they need help. Then you start to learn a lot too about how, how you can adapt to different things. I thought that I had to have an answer for everything and then realized that I didn't have to have an answer for mm -hmm. everything. We just gotta figure it out along the way. And I think that they like, they like that too because they got to be a part of this. You know, so like we're kind of creating the rules, you know, like, and it's kind of rare to be pioneering something in, you, in, in this time, but it's just like, that, that's what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. So the things that had the heaviest attendance were something that we called ATF Town Hall. You know, and so like it would be just all of us getting together just to jam and share fears and issues. And then the other biggest thing that had the most attendance and probably did the most for people, um, one of our um, volunteer trainers who has recently moved to North Carolina um, came up with what she called quarantinis. And everyone would just kind of come in and like, we all got cards against humanity. Everyone has their deck and like, whatever, you get a drink and we're just hanging out. And like that ended up becoming a massive thing you know and um it was it kind of fulfilled that thing of what people needed at the time yoga was also pretty well attended and you know i think that that speaks to with the town hall and the quarantini game night thing and the yoga i mean you know the yoga is is yin so it's not like it's this super aggressive you know we need you to go into your bathroom and turn on the shower so it's hot type situation right it was 
um, a much more restorative kind of a style. And so, you know, to us, it just really spoke to the need for people's, uh, you know, the stuff between the ears to be really taken care of. The meditations, what we would do as well a couple of times a week was just get on and allow them to talk about what their frustrations were, what their, what their fears were, their concerns, and walk them through that process, whether it being isolation, not being able to go to the store, especially with their, with their disabilities. You know, my, my best advice is just to, to get boots on the ground and go watch it in action because it's, it's magical. It really is. As a coach, it's, it's great fun. And the thing is that these people just smile, man. They just love this stuff. There were situations when suddenly there's a dog involved. Yeah. At one stage, we had a person that had a cat coming in and sitting on the screen. <laughs> the best one I ever had was a freaking parrot flying around. <laughs> so the, the challenge is the professionalism as a coach to realize you are now looking into the world of your clients in their most private personal belongings mm -hmm. and kind of not to judge that and not to um, let that cloud what your purpose is. If we go back to the dark ages, if you were disabled, you kind of didn't live very long, okay? You, you kind of died pretty quickly. Um, where today there's a, there's a social shift of let's look after our community and, you know, in New Zealand, the family is called a whānau. And um, the whānau is, is massive. The, the family spirit here is huge. And it takes a family um, to come times raise a child. And I go, yeah, okay. But I think it's actually a village. I think a village sometimes has to raise these children and these people or look after them. That being said, we live in a global village. For crying out loud, let's share, man. Let's share and let's grow and let's build this up. Because I think there is huge potential and what a great medium look at this i would never have thought 10 years ago i would be doing video conferencing calls to somebody in yesterday and i'm in today yeah. and um, you know it's like how cool is this stuff